Watch this! All right, this is the leg extension exercise. It's an isolation movement for the lower body, for the quadricep muscles in the front of the thighs. Now you've already hopefully done a compound movement, like a leg press or a body weight squat or a dumbbell or free weight squat. Uh, something that basically brings a lot of blood flow to the lower body, a compound movement, multi-joint. Uh, and you really want to do something like that first before you hit a isolation motion for the quadriceps because this involves the knee joint directly. Actually on this one I'd recommend doing two sets. One set maybe uh, with half the weight that you're planning on using just to bring some more blood flow into the knee and then go on to your, uh, your heavier set. Now of course I'm going to tell you which muscles this works. It's a quadricep exercise. So quadricep has four uh, muscles within the, uh, the entire muscle group region. Uh, it has the vastus lateralis, the outside of the thigh, the vastus medialis, the inside, the vastus intermedius, which is deep inside the, the center of the thigh, and then the rectus femoris, which is the, the top of the thigh. So there we go. With that being said, it's the quadriceps. Uh, the reason I mention that though too is that uh, a lot of the leg pressing type uh, movements, like a, a, a squat or a leg press, when you're doing that, you have almost no resistance at the top of the motion. There's so much leverage. As your legs get locked out, uh, you get stronger and stronger. There's just more leverage, but the resistance kind of goes away when you do that. Like you could stand up in a squat all day long, but you, you can't hold the position all day when you're, when you're down, your legs at a 90 degree angle. So when your legs bent like that, you're working the outside of the thigh, you're working the vastus lateralis more, you're not putting much focus on the vastus medialis. So a leg extension puts resistance through the full range of motion, both when your knees are bent and when your, your legs are extended. And as they're extended, you put a lot more resistance on the vastus medialis muscle. And you'll find that people who don't do leg extensions, who only do pressing uh, movements, they tend to have their kneecap uh, slide laterally to the outside of the, uh, the leg, and you get something called chondromalacia. So not that this is a, a cure-all, but it does um, help with either alleviating, alleviating the symptoms of chondromalacia or, uh, or just preventing it. So it's trying to work the vastus medialis muscle, pulls the kneecap back in that track and keeps it in line. Now there's different types of leg extensions on the market. Uh, a wide variety. Some of them you can move isolaterally one leg at a time. Uh, some have two rollers, some have one fixed roller like this. But get yourself in position on it. You have to be careful not to hurt your knee while you're getting in. You don't want to swing your ankle over here and torque your knee while you're getting in position here. So if you have one extended roller, get in smoothly, get in slowly. Uh, the key on setup for this, actually there's a couple different positions on this uh, specific machine. This has a lower roller adjustment, so you can adjust the uh, range of motion on the lower roller. You want to put it close to the, uh, the foot, on the ankle, not necessarily touching the foot, but it should be, um, you don't want it up uh, higher on the leg. If that roller were up closer to my knee, it, it really lightens the resistance. So this one has three different settings depending on leg length. Just make sure you, whatever you use, you use the same one all the time, but keep it close to the foot. Uh, another key on this one is uh, knee position. You want to have your legs flush back to the, to the pad here. So you can adjust the seat, you can set the seat back all the way, make sure your knees lined up with the red dot or the axis rotation of the machine, but typically there's not any space back behind the knee, back behind the popliteal or popliteal fossa, whichever you prefer. Uh, so keep your knees flush back all the way to the pad and then adjust the seat height so it's up against your lower back to support your lower back. Then you can lean back. Those are the three settings then. Ankle position, knee position, and lower back position with all three adjustments. Uh, when you're doing this, there is a seat belt. You don't necessarily always have to use it. If I'm using a weight that's less than half my body weight, so right now it's 80 pounds, it's really not gonna have that much effect on lifting me out of the seat. If I were using 200 pounds or even 150 pounds, what happens, the, uh, the roller presses down and it kind of uses my knee as a, as a seesaw or teeter-totter and pushes my uh, hips up out of the seat. So it's really good to have a seat belt, keep your hips down so you don't have to clench really hard with your, with your fists. If you hold on really, really tight, what happens is the blood comes down to your hand, it's closing off the blood vessels squeeze by squeezing tightly and the blood can't come back to the heart. So it's increasing blood pressure, you get this back pressure. And remember, whenever you're doing any kind of exercise, you should have this poker face uh, relaxation to you. I mean, if somebody is looking at you from across the room, they should really not know how hard you're working. You don't want to be turning all different colors while you're doing this. So the seatbelt does keep the uh, hips down. It prevents you from holding on really, really tight if you're using a lot, of, a lot of weight on the machine. But in this case, it's 80 pounds. It's less than half my body weight. And so I'm not gonna use the seatbelt, but they usually are available on most machines. Now, if I were gonna use 80 pounds on a set, what I would recommend doing is maybe doing a, uh, a couple of repetitions first 
at 40 pounds, at half the weight, just to warm up the joint. Even though you've done the squats, you've done the compound movement, it just brings a little extra blood flow to the area, it kind of helps the uh, patella get lined up in the patellar groove and keep your knee on track. So do maybe a, a half a dozen, a dozen repetitions, something like that at a lighter weight, and then place the pin back at the weight that you're gonna use for your first set. So I'm back to 80 pounds. Now, when you're doing this, uh, remember it's two or three seconds up, it's four or five seconds down. That's a, that's a key point. If you have any kind of a knee injury, any kind of uh, pain in the knee at all when you're doing this, stop. Uh, don't do it at all if you know ahead of time that you have a knee problem, make sure it's, it's checked out. Usually it doesn't pose a problem if you don't have problems. If you do, sometimes it helps, sometimes it doesn't. It really depends on your specific situation. Uh, but when you're doing this, one thing you can do to kind of uh, spot check before you go up is start with some partial repetitions. Come up maybe halfway first on the first repetition, make sure the knee feels okay. What happens is, is sometimes people go through a full range of motion all the way up to begin, and if the knee's not in the right groove, they kind of grind through it at the end, and that can cause more injury. So uh, you, I, I'd never go on the first repetition, I never go more than three quarters range of motion just to make sure that everything is lined up correctly. Go back down all the way, almost touch the weight, not maybe uh, completely, maybe let them tap just uh, slightly. Don't let the weight rest at all, like I just did, and back up. Then you can go a full range of motion on, on the second re uh, repetition. So slowly back down, now to full range repetitions. The head can stay neutral, it can stay back, just nice and relaxed, not gripping too tightly. If you don't have a seatbelt and uh, you need to hold your body weight down, what you can do is hold yourself, maybe not clenching the fist, but hold yourself tightly with the handles, breathe out on the way up, and then on the way back down or in between repetitions, you can kind of release, release the hands just for a second just to kind of let the blood return back to where it's supposed to go, and then hold yourself tightly again on the next repetition. So it really depends on the type of equipment you have access to. Now, although we're trying to work the quadriceps, the upper thighs when you're doing this motion, one of the most important positions of the body is, is your feet. Which way are your feet pointed? Uh, whether you point them outward like this, this is called plantar flexion, uh, like plantar warts, and then dorsiflexion, pulling your toes back. So it's flexion or flexion, plantar or dorsi. And dorsiflexion, when, you're, when, you're, um, when your toes are pulled back towards you, and you can do this. So if you're just sitting down on your couch right now, you don't, you're not on a machine, pull your, put your leg out straight, pull your toe back slowly, you're going to feel tightness in the back of the calf. Unless you're extremely flexible, you do a lot of, uh, a lot of stretching, you're probably going to have pretty tight calves. And if that muscle is tight right there, not only can it cause an injury, cause a strain. If, if I'm pushing up against 100 pounds or 200 pounds on this with my toes uh, pulled back, that muscle may strain because I'm, I'm exerting so much force with my quadriceps. So you can strain that muscle, but also there's something called reciprocal inhibition. Reciprocal inhibition. And basically the reciprocating muscle group, the opposing muscle group is inhibited. It's not contracting as hard as it possibly could contract because of that stretch. So if I'm lifting this up and my toes are pulled back, I'm dorsiflexed, don't forget that. <laughs> if I'm dorsiflexed, my calves are tight, so that calf tightness, because it crosses over the knee joint, is going to prevent the quadriceps from contracting fully. These muscles will not contract with their maximal force because this is tight. It's a protective mechanism. Basically, your, your body's protecting itself from straining the calf because it's in a tight position. So whenever you're doing this, pretend you're like kicking a, a football. Your toe's out and you're punting it away. Uh, you don't want to pull your toes back towards you. So this is the, the final repetition here. Hands back, head neutral or back, seatbelt on if you're using more than, more than half your body weight. Breathe out, slowly up. First repetition will be three quarters range of motion. Slowly back down, weights are just almost about to tap. And breathe out, full range of motion, toes pointed. Slowly back down, four or five seconds. One other point, you don't wanna always look to the side to see how close the weights are to touching. I'd rather have you touch the weights, just tap them slightly and bring it right back up. If your head's to the side on every single machine you use, you're gonna walk around lopsided. You're gonna develop one side of the body more than other. So if you're gonna to look to the side on one repetition to kind of judge where the weight stack is, the next one look the other way, but it's better just to keep yourself central, facing forward, <sighs> poker faced, slowly back down. Uh, leg extensions work the quadriceps. The quadriceps are a slow twitch for most people, slow twitch muscle fiber. They have a lot of uh, slow twitch fibers that don't like to fatigue. So when you fatigue them, they, they burn. They create a lot of lactic acid, uh, 
which causes pain, causes fatigue, and uh, just be prepared for that. You have to kind of work through that. Uh, it's a gradual process, but uh, it's a great exercise. It's a great fat burner because it's so much muscle there, it's gonna raise the metabolism. And uh, we're on to our next exercise, which is the back of the thighs, the hamstrings.